Namaskar. I have Maria with me today, and what we're going to do is we're going to discuss tree pose. We're going to talk about a few things that can go wrong in tree pose, a few things that can go right, and at the same time, what we're going to do is um, toward the end of this, and it may even be a separate uh, film, will be um, tree pose and some modifications. So let's look at precautions. Depends on a student how um, they are as far as mobility. So for example, tree pose might be something you take for granted when you're younger and you're in your 20s and your 30s or you're in your teens and you're pretty fit and what happens is it's no problem to do it. Then what happens is sometimes some people are inactive and there's another thing, sometimes some people are top heavy so what happens is uh, there's a lot of weight up top and not so much weight on the legs and that just is a recipe for not having such good balance. Um, then there's another thing that we should mention and that is um, proper alignment. Proper alignment could be, for example, something as simple as you watch a commercial on TV and you see people all the time with the foot on the outside of the knee, to the side of the knee. And here's why the that's not a good idea. Below the knee or above the knee is fine, but pushing on the side of the knee, not so good. Let's say I'm a man who weighs about 200 pounds, okay? And what happens is, each leg is used to taking 100 pounds of weight. I go and do tree pose, now 200 pounds of weight is on this knee. Then I decide that I'm gonna take my foot and push it against the side of the knee at the same time. That's kind of pushing your knee out of alignment. If I stay in this position for a long time, I realize that you could, there's things you could do that are worse than that to your knee, but that's not good. So the foot should be below or above the knee. The other thing is as far as modifications, I briefly touched on it, but I want to mention that a wall is a good idea. We're not going to show a wall. We're actually going to show a chair. Uh, a chair is a good idea. Um, those are the main props that I would use. That I'm sure, I mean, if you're creative and you have something in your house or you're in a, a studio that has a pole right through the middle of, of the studio, I've seen those as well. It usually is in the old structures and there's some kind of a support beam. Um, the other thing is teachers, when you're going around making um, adjustments. If I'm a um, taller teacher than my student, I'm going to have to bend down a little bit, so I'm going to have to keep my whole body even and come down and bend a little bit. The difference in height between Marie and I is a little bit, so what happens is myself, I'll be coming down just slightly, so I'll be bending my knees. If I'm um, shorter than my student, and let's just say I have this big guy in class, whether I'm a male or a female instructor, and that person most likely will weigh more than me, I want to make sure that whatever I do, I support them, and they don't end up falling on me. So you can kind of see where there are unless you're working with somebody who's exactly your height, which isn't going to happen very often, uh, unless you're working under those circumstances, there's always some kind of a handicap, whether you're taller than your student or whether you're shorter than your student, you have to adjust. Because when you make adjustments to your students, you want yourself to be in good posture as well. Um, with that said, um, Marie, did, do you have any other ideas that um, you wanted to mention? No, I think that pretty much covers it. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, with that in mind, what we're going to do in the next part is we're going to work on doing tree posture, and we're going to go over a number of modifications, and we're going to start off by using a prop. 
ओम शांति